Hello, it's Dan from Bokane Designs, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to set up the SiteGround Optimizer plugin. When you first log into WordPress, go ahead and go to Plugins and click Add New, and type in SiteGround Optimizer. You'll see it's the first choice right here. We're going to go ahead and click Activate. And just a little background with this plugin. This plugin was originally made to only work on SiteGround servers, but it does work on any hosting now. However, all the features are not available um, if you aren't part of SiteGround hosting. So if you don't host with SiteGround, I would recommend using WP Rocket instead, and I'll have a video for that as well. Um, if you do use SiteGround, go ahead and try their plugin out first because it does work really well with their hosting. So now that we've got it installed, we want to do a couple things. Um, log into your hosting at SiteGround and go to your site tool. So here we are. Um, and on the left sidebar, go to speed and go to caching. And just make sure you see your domain listed here and that this is enabled. If you have a Go Geek plan and maybe the Grow Big plan, you also can enable Memcache. So in here, click the Memcache tab and click this little button to enable it once this finishes spiraling. And you'll get a visual confirmation in the top right corner. Now we can go back to our WordPress website. And before I did any installing of this plugin or any optimization, I ran a quick speed test at GTM Metrics. And you can see the site does pretty well, even without a plugin. Um, there just isn't a lot on this website in terms of software, but this is also a good one to show you how to optimize this plugin. So let's go ahead and go to SiteGround Optimizer on the left, and first we'll go to the Caching tab. You have the option to let SiteGround collect data about how you're using the plugin to make it better. We're going to go ahead and check this, but you can leave this unchecked. And now you can see what they're recommending a bunch of settings. Um, so turn on dynamic caching, turn on memmed cache. File-based caching may or may not be good for your website. If you use a page builder like Elementor, file-based caching has been causing some issues. So you might consider leaving this off if it creates issues for you. But if you are not sure if it's gonna work for you or not, go ahead and turn it on. And just make sure your website still works. Uh, load it in incognito tab, click around, make sure everything looks correctly. If it doesn't, come back here and shut that off. Everything else here can be left the same for a typical website. Um, if you know there's pages on your website that you <clears throat> cannot cache, so if you have like a, a store with a checkout page, sometimes you'll put the checkout page here. So we just put checkout, because in this case, the store checkout page is just checkout. Uh, and that way, the checkout doesn't get cached, and that will prevent some issues with coupon usage, logging into an existing customer account, little things like that. Uh, so that's all for the caching tab. Let's go to the environment tab next here on the left sidebar. And you can see we have a few options. Uh, if you have an SSL certificate, you can force the website to require all visits to go through HTTPS. You can also have it fix any kind of insecure content on your website, content that's saying HTTP instead of HTTPS. It'll give that an S to make sure it's connected with the certificate. So let's go ahead and turn these on. Let's click the toggle. This is giving you a warning that you might get logged out. So we got a visual confirmation in the top right corner. In my case, it didn't log me out because the website already had a valid HTTPS being enforced. But if it didn't, I would have been logged out. And all you do is log back in and click on SiteGround Optimizer on the left sidebar. You'll come back here and it'll look just like this. Uh, so now that we're enforcing HTTPS, we can also fix our insecure content. And then the next two sections are kind of up to you. If you're running a simple website and there's not a lot of interfacing on the front end, you don't have users logging in and leaving messages on your on a message board or on a blog comment, or maybe they're submitting content. If you don't have things like that and you just have a normal website where you show off your business services or your products, you can come down to the, web, uh, the WordPress heartbeat and just disable it across the end. Um, but if you do have some of that interaction, and you do need this enabled, leave it on, but you can bump the times up to 120 seconds. And that way it still runs, but just at a slower interval. 
And then lastly, you can automatically clean your database by turning this on. And weekly, it'll get rid of post revisions and anything in your trash. So keep that in mind. If you like having a lot of post revisions, you might not want to turn this setting on. Next on the list is front end. So click here on the left sidebar to go to front end. And for the most part, every website should be good for turning on minify CSS, minify JavaScript, then go to general, minify HTML, web font optimization, remove query strings, and disable emojis. This generally won't break your website, regardless to your setup. Now let's go back to the CSS tab and go through the rest. So in many cases, you can turn on combined CSS, but some websites, if you have a lot of plugins or some custom code, this might break something. So we'll turn it on here. And if we know, let's just say you have a plugin like WooCom and it's breaking your site when you turn on combined CSS, you can click exclude from CSS co combination and include, they'll show you all the different CSS files on your sheet, on your site. So let's just pretend that this one is the problem. We can click on this, and now that one won't get added to our combo. So we can still optimize our website as best as possible and just exclude what we know isn't gonna work rather than skipping out on combining CSS files. The same thing with preloaded, uh, preload combined CSS. You can enable this setting, but if it does cause problems, which it will for some websites, just shut it off. Um, if you have a combined file and you want to undo it or remove it or alter it, you can just click the edit pen and it'll show you what's here. Click the little X, click confirm. You can see now there are no scripts being excluded. The same can be done with JavaScript. You can exclude if you know it's causing issues. And then in this case, let's turn everything on because with this website, there aren't a lot of plugins. I'm not expecting a lot of issues. Let's go to our speed test to look for one more thing. So I ran a test. Um, when you're logged into GT Metrics, even with a free account, and I recommend everyone has a free account, they give you more data. You'll be able to look at the structure and the waterfall breakdown. And for preloading fonts, this is important. So just to show what we're going to do, we want to preload our fonts to make sure they load as quickly as possible and that the text renders the correct way immediately rather than the text showing up and then changing the font after. So on your waterfall chart, click on the fonts link and you'll see all the fonts your website serves. There's only three of them. So in this case, well, on this website, there's only three. We'll click on the first entry, copy the URL, come here, and then we hit paste. We click the plus sign and we're gonna repeat for the other two entries. And there are times where there might be 15 or 16 entries and that's where you just need to copy paste them all or reconsider your font selection so there's fewer options. So we've got our preload, we click confirm. So now we'll see fonts preloading and it has three fonts listed and if we click on that, it'll show you what we entered. The other thing we wanna do is prefetch for external domains. And the easiest way to find that is on the waterfall chart. Go back to the all tab and then click on domain and it'll sort this by domain. You can see we have fonts.googleapis as one of our domains, so we'll grab that. And we've got fonts.gstatic.com. And we have google-analytics.com. Google Tag Manager. Dot com and then the next ones listed are our domain pajamify.com so we're not taking that because that's not an external domain we'll come back here and we'll click confirm so let's quickly look at our settings here well so general is all set up so far we don't know if we have to exclude anything so we haven't excluded anything um, let's also pre-combine the CSS and see what happens uh, the final thing we want to do is go to the media tab. And on the media tab, there's a couple different options here. So one, you can have it so when people upload images to your site or when you upload images to your website, you could have this plugin automatically compress it for you. And the way you do that is you click edit, you pick the compression level you want, and then there's some checkboxes. So you can overwrite 
images. You can compress the existing images that have already been uploaded. And you can also tell it to take a backup of everything, which I highly recommend if you have the space, because that way, if you need to go back, you can. It's If you compress an image and it doesn't look good and there's no way to revert it, that's not, that's not good. Um, they do have a preview tool, so you can at least verify that it's going to work out well for you. And you can see, you can select an image from your media library. So let's grab this family in pajamas. And then you can see this is with no compression level, nothing is different either way. But then we can go to 25% and you can get an idea of like, what's it gonna look like? Let's go high. And you can see she's very pixelated now. Um, you know, you can see the difference between the two is drastic. Even here, you can see a little, little bit of grain, but maybe 25%, 25%, a little bit going on, but I would call that acceptable. Um, in this case, the original size didn't go down, so we wouldn't even need to compress this image. Um, but chances are some other images on your server would benefit from this compression. So you can enable that if you want to. Um, the next setting is WP images. I recommend this for everybody, even if you don't do image compression. So all you do is turn this on and a, web, a WP image, a WebP image, is going to load faster than a JPEG or a PNG of the same type. Um, and SiteGround will automatically make them for you once you click Confirm. You'll see a counter, so converting image. I'm going to pause the video while this runs. OK, so once your images are converted, it'll stop and confirm that it's finished. And then the next thing you could do is come down to lazy, lazy load, which will make images load as needed. So we're going to go ahead and click toggle to turn this feature on. If there's certain things on your website that you don't want the lazy load, so a good example, let's go to our home page. And the logo is a good example of an image you, you might want to skip lazy loading because it's at the top of every page if it loads later the web page might render and then the logo shows up and that can influence cumulative layout shift, which is a core web vital and you don't wanna have that go into the red, but also it's just kind of jarring to have the logo appear after the content. So we're gonna have the logo forego um, lazy loading. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna inspect it and we're gonna find out what is the class and Astra makes it very easy. The class for the logo is just custom logo. So we'll come back here and we'll go to classes and you can see they already included one for us but that's not what we want we want custom dash logo and again this is just with astra yours might be different um, if you're not sure how to do this you will know need to know how to use css a little bit just to target the uh, selector but now you can see we click confirm and now the logo will not lazy load uh, if you notice you have other issues with lazy load occurring and maybe it's breaking parts of your website, maybe like your blog has an archive page with a, like, a nice grid of images of your featured images, maybe those aren't loading right, you would come in here and turn off some lazy loads and see if that works. And you just click on different options. I mean, you could turn them all off and then turn them on one by one. Um, but the, ideally, let everything lazy load unless it's causing a problem. So now we are done configuring this plugin. For now, and we come to the front page, you can see a lot of settings are on. Um, this is because WebP is turned off right now. Um, and that's more because the conversion process was going to take longer than I wanted to for this video. But normally you'd leave WP on or Web, WebP images on. So let's go ahead and go to incognito mode and quickly browse our website. We see it loaded pretty quick. And the archive page loads pretty quick. Product pages load. You know, not too, not too slow. Um, let's see how it does with the test. So we already had good, good speed before, but let's go ahead and run a fresh test now that we um, will duplicate this tab, but we'll run a fresh test and see if we did better. Okay, so the test results came in and you'll see overall we are better. Let's go look at the other tab from the previous test. So we did have 100% on the structure and now we're down to 98. But performance went from 91 to 99, and more importantly, and these are the metrics that matter, look at the performance metrics. The first contentful paint went from being 1.3 seconds, and now it is half a second. So that's more than twice as fast. And if we look at the others, you'll see similar gains where everything is occurring. Even here, the longest contentful paint took almost a second and a half. And we're now we're loading in just over half a second. Um, time to interactiveness, also much better. 
And this is with WP uh, WebP images turned off. So if those were actually enabled, this would be even a better score and a better faster loading site. Uh, we can see in our water chart what's taking the longest. And right now, WooCom is to blame. That's typical. You'll see, see these bars. The biggest bar is generally going to be the uh, Ajax refresh. But that's something you really can't do much about. That's going to be restricted to how good your hosting is. Uh, but it's also not creating a problem, as you can see in this. This is loading fantastic. Um, let's quickly do a light speed test, lighthouse test. So I've opened up Chrome. I'm going to my website. And then I'm going to go ahead and run a lighthouse test, which is the same algorithm, the same tools as Google's page speed website. But this will do it right from your browser rather than going to their website. And you can see that was much faster. So we got an 83 on mobile. The site loads in 2.2 seconds and finishes loading in under four seconds. So for a web store, that's fantastic. And we also don't have uh, WebP images being served. So again, that would be even faster if we had WebP enabled at the time of these tests. Let's quickly do a desktop lighthouse as well. And you can see we got a 93 with the site loading in 0.4 seconds, fully loading in 1.1 second. And the only recommendation is to remove unused CSS, which is something SiteGround's plugin doesn't do so well. WP Rocket can do that. But again, this is not any issue anymore. Uh, this website is fast enough. And at this point, I would be looking for other ways to improve it, not related to site speed. And hopefully this shows you how to Add SiteGround Optimizer to your website and make your website load very quickly. Leave me any questions in the comments. I'd be happy to follow up with you. Thank you.